Okay, so continuing uh, the previous video, today I want to go to the next step that is blur or image blurring. So after we convert the image into a grayscale image, we need to apply a blur to the image. Okay, so here's the converted image. Now, what is image blurring? So image blurring is an image processing technique that reduces detail and smooths out sharp transitions by averaging pixel, averaging pixel values in a local neighborhood. And this results in a less defined version of the image that helps minimize noise and simplify complex areas, making it easier for algorithms to process the image in tasks such as edge detection or OCR. In an OCR application, blurring is used to reduce noise and minor details in an image that can interfere with accurate text recognition. By smoothing out unwanted pixel variations such as specks or thin lines from poor scanning or lighting, blurring enhances the contrast between the text and background, making the text clearer for the OCR algorithm. Remember that we need a smooth and natural looking blur that removes small noise without blurring the edges too much because the shapes of the characters in text is crucial. Okay, so for OCR application, we want to recognize the text or at least where the text is in the, is in the image. So here in OpenCV, there are four types of blur. Okay, so here's the OpenCV documentation. And there are uh, four types of blurring. So averaging, and this is the results, and then Gaussian blurring, and this is the results, and median blurring, this is the results, and finally bilateral filtering, and this is the results. Okay. So I already rank them based on the best choice for OCR purpose. So uh, at least for general purpose OCR, okay? So here, Gaussian Blur would probably be the best standard choice for OCR. So Gaussian Blur uh, applies a Gaussian function with the average to the pixels within the kernel. The weights decrease with distance from the center, resulting in a smoother, more natural blur. This blur reduces noise while maintaining some level of detail. The blur effect is less uniform than averaging, creating a more realistic blur. And this is the syntax. So we are using cv 2gaussianblur and then the image, and then we specify the kernel size, and then we specify the sigma x and also the sigma y. And it is common for general image smoothing and pre-processing, especially when a balance between noise reduction and detail preservation is needed. And the kernel size specifies the size of the Gaussian kernel. It should be a tuple of two odd integers, such as 3 by 3 or 5 by 5. The larger the kernel size, the more the image will be blur. The values must be odd numbers to have a center pixel for the kernel. For example, 7 by 7 applies the 7 by 7 Gaussian kernel. There are sigma x and sigma y. Those are parameter that defines the standard deviation in each axis. If set to 0, then OpenCV will automatically calculate it based on the kernel size. This ensures that the blurring effect is symmetric. Okay, so let's see from the documentation. Okay, so this is the Gaussian blur, and this is the result we want to achieve. Okay. Okay. Uh, here I use a seven by seven kernel size and default standard deviation, so zero. Okay. CV Gaussian Blur, gray, 7 by 7 and 0. And here's the result. Uh, you can play and try different kernel size and see which one is best for you using the Gaussian Blur. Okay. Next, at the second place, we have Median Blur. Now, Median Blur uses the median of the pixel values within the kernel to replace the central pixel. This method is particularly effective at removing salt and pepper noise. It preserves the edges better than averaging or Gaussian blur while effectively reducing noise. And here's the syntax. We are using cv 2medium blur and then the image and then we specify the kernel size. And this is best for images with significant noise or when preserving edges is important. And let's see from the documentation. 
or median blurring okay so this is the median blurring and this is the uh, result that we want to achieve okay okay this is as uh, so many noise actually in this uh, original image okay so here I use CV2 dot median blur and I use kernel size 3 and here's the results but since this image doesn't have too much noise uh, from the original image so the result is worse than before okay next uh, at the third place we have bilateral filter now bilateral filter blurs the image while preserving edges by considering both the spatial distance and the intensity difference between pixels it smooths the image while retaining sharp edges making it unique compared to other blurring methods and here's the syntax so we are using cv2 dot bilateral filter then image and then we specify for parameter d sigma color and sigma space and this is ideal for application where edge preservation is crucial such as processing images with complex patterns or textures okay so let's see from the opencp documentation so this is bilateral filtering and this is the result of the image that we want to achieve okay Okay, uh, here, uh, actually, bilateral filter is excellent at preserving edges while reducing noise, which is great for maintaining text integrity. Uh, however, bilateral filter is computationally more expensive and probably overkill for OCR because the text document doesn't have complex noise, right? And here, uh, for uh, the parameter, D uh, is the diameter of pixel neighborhood. Higher D means more blurring, and sigma color controls the filter sensitivity to pixel intensity differences, and sigma space controls the spatial extent of the filter. Okay, here I use the bilateral filter, and the result is probably similar to the Gaussian blur because it does take a Gaussian filter in space. Okay, so as you can see here. The bilateral filtering also takes a Gaussian filter in space. Okay, so it's uh, yeah more computationally expensive than Gaussian blur. Next, at the last place is averaging blur. So this method calculates the average of all the pixel values within the kernel filter matrix and is assigns this average to the central pixel. It produces a simple and uniform blur across the image and this is the syntax cv2.blur image and we specify the kernel size. Okay. This is for basic noise reduction when edge preservation is not critical. And so yeah, we're using cv2.blur and we I use kernel size 5 by 5 and here's the image this type of blur is the least that we want to use because it is less effective for OCR task due to its tendency to blur edges so in conclusion you should try to use Gaussian blur first for general purpose image blurring but for some specific task you probably want to try other types of blur and see which one is better for your OCR okay so and that's it for this video and we can continue to the next video thank you